welcome to the lectures on evolution of air interface towards 5G. So, till now uh, we have uh, discussed the uh, earlier waveforms as well as well as we have laid the foundation for discussing the waveform for the fourth generation and fifth generation. And we have also discussed the basic framework uh, on which the 4G and 5G stands that is the OFDM and upon which we have DFT spread OFDM which is also a modification of OFDM and uh, which is primarily there to reduce the peak to average power ratio. So, this particular method we have said is used in the uplink direction and it is valid for both 4G as well as in 5G whereas, when we go to the fifth generation standard we said that it primarily uses OFDM. So, today uh, we in this particular lecture we take a look into the specifications of the fifth generation system especially the frame format and how OFDM fits in and what are the different variations what are the different documents that one needs to refer to. So, we will primarily look at the main contributions, the changes and how does the whole thing work. So, today our discussion will be about the waveform in 5G and uh, this particular uh, is waveform is given a new name called the new radio. So, usually you will find NR as the terminology which is more popularly used. So, usually the industry goes by keywords and acronyms. So, NR is the name which will often occur for next quite a few years at least till the next uh, 10 years and uh, it is nothing but the air interface for the fifth generation which is again uh, need not be scared about the new name it is just a modification of whatever existed before. So, if we look at uh, how things got developed uh, again we are looking at the 3GPP which is the third generation partnership project uh, which has come up with uh, LTE or the long term evolution and which is again proposing the next generation system that is the NR as they call it which will be the fifth generation system. So, as we can see that uh, 3GPP from its standard website what you will find is that it unites several telecommunication standards development organizations and this is directly from the website that is what I have taken over here and it is a group uh, par where many partners participate together towards creating specifications and uh, primarily there are three broad categories or classifications. Uh, one of them is the radio access network. So, what we are concerned is with the radio access network which is the part between the base stations and the mobile units. So, the entire network where there will be multiple base stations and multiple mobile units uh, they could be cross connected, they would be interconnected. So, this last part of the network beyond which the core network starts is the radio access network part. So, this is the radio access network we have described in one of the earlier lectures uh, how does the radio access network work, what are the different procedures and protocols. Then there are services and system aspects that is another group and the core network and terminals is another group. So, primarily uh, the radio access network is where we are mainly concerned because this is the one where air interface comes into play. Whereas, uh, in the core network part it is mostly wired network most of the time it is wired network and of course, uh, along with it different kinds of services and system aspects are also present, but as uh, the name of the course suggests uh, we will be in the air interface and hence primarily in the radio access network part. So, uh, if you look at again the 3GPP I mean uh, whatever is, is stated in 3GPP is we are basically reading that particular out is that uh, these generations that means this 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G as we have been stating uh, they does not come just like that. I mean it is not just a sudden release and uh, as if there is some milestone and at suddenly some point you reach 2G and at suddenly certain point you reach 3G or 4G or at 5G it is not like that it is rather a continuous evolution from one stage to another that is what uh, 3GPP primarily aims at and it describes it in that manner. And uh, amongst other major things it also says that backward compatibility is very very important backward as well as forward compatibility. So, this is also primary thing because it is a continuous evolving technology that means, uh, suddenly if we find something some new technology over here which does not coexist or does not work together with 2G then it is a big problem overall huge amount of investment has to be done and so on. So, here uh, what 3GPP usually does is it presents new proposal in terms of releases 
So, you will find release 99, release 4, 5 and so on and we are currently in the phase of release 15, release 16. So, these would primarily compri comprise what we are discussing about 5G. Release 15 specifications are available. So, one can usually uh, go to the 3GPP website and find the release 15 specifications. Usually, this is called 5G wave 1 or the first part of 5G. With release 16, uh, one is expected to get the full specification of 5G. So, what happened in this period? LTE, which is release 8, uh, we have seen earlier that it met almost all of the requirements of IMT advanced, right? And LTE advanced, which is release 10, is uh, basically the one which meets all of them without any problem. I mean, all of them are exceeded significantly. And IMT advanced is essentially LTE advanced, and LTE is sometimes called 3.9 G. So, what again we see is that there is a continuous development of things as things have moved on. So, what we have here is uh, basically two things one is the radio side, that means the wireless signaling side, and the other is the system architecture, okay, how the entire thing works. And uh, this especially works with respect to the core network, the signaling and other aspects. And this one primarily talks about the waveforms, the air interface and so on, radio access technology, radio access network. So, what we see is that UMTS, which we have described earlier, is usually coming under release 99. HSDP, HSPA, which is the high speed packet access downlink and sometimes it is also called HSDPA, high speed downlink packet access, it is part of release 5. High speed packet access for uplink, it is part of release 6. So, one can see that continuous there is an evaluation evolution and this is HSPA plus. So, on our phones when we get H plus, we would think about getting HSPA plus and these range of systems would be classified broadly as 4G. These systems, they use a different air interface, primarily they use CDMA, which we have discussed in some details and these systems onwards, they use OFDM within brackets A framework and we have discussed the basic layout for the OFDM system. These two systems vary significantly from each other in terms of the physical way of looking at the waveforms, but when we write them mathematically, we can still find a lot of similarity between them if we look at it at an abstract level, if we think it from the basis functions. So, getting to the core network apps aspect, uh, there is IMS which got introduced around release 5, EPC is the evolved packet core which got uh, established around release 8 and then there were multiple developments. Next generation systems are basically the 5G systems which are coming into play. So, what we see effectively is that there is a gradual change of the different technologies, gradual improvement and not a sudden change as we go from one generation to another. And this particular picture summarizes the changeover from one generation to the next generation, especially over the last three generation of things. So, uh, when we go into the sequence of events, the 5G as we have been discussing is uh, primarily the main uh, technology that uh, are of our concern. And in order to look into uh, the specifications, one has to go into the series of documents that is listed over here. And uh, what you find over here, the introduction of 5G that what we are discussing is kind of improvement over LTE, over LTE advanced, over LTE pro. So, here again you are seeing that they are gradually changing over with slight change in uh, the name as well as slight change in the, the uh, technology that is why the name is changing. And the first drop of new radio that is what we have described features in release 15, whereas in release 16 one is expected to get the entire range of uh, 5G efforts. But it is to be understood that uh, 5G is not going to stop at release 16, there would be further developments beyond release 16, which would continue to enhance the so called 5G, which we are waiting for eagerly and will slowly enhance and grow towards the next generation, which is 6G. So, when we go to 6G, we will again find that there is a dramatic change 
slow change, gradual change, but overall between the fifth generation and sixth generation, there will be again a dramatic change as we have seen over here, like the primarily the air interface got changed significantly in this particular case. So, here what we have is uh, the radio aspects for UMTS and all uh, got enlisted in the 25 series documents. That means, if you go to 3GPP website, you will get 25.301, 25.xyz kind of documents which describe the different specifications that are provided, which include the physical layer, which includes the user equipment, which includes the base station, which includes the services, the core network, everything. So, whenever you are looking at the 25 series, it is primarily the UMTS set of documents. If we go beyond, that is the uh, LTE and other documents, it is the 36 series of documents. So, there again we have uh, 36.201, 36.104, 36.101 and several other documents. So, if you if you open uh, this 36 series documents in 3GPP, you will find a whole set of documents which describe the entire operation of the network. So, when we go beyond LTE and especially we are talking about the radio technology beyond LTE, we will have to look at the 38 series of documents. right? So, again this is from the 3GPP website. So, all are from 3GPP. So, if you go to 3GPP, you are going to get the detailed specifications. So, the objective of these specifications is that they are going to meet IMT 2020 requirements. Right. So, as it is said, the full compliance with ITU's IMT 2020 requirement is anticipated with the completion of 3GPP release 16 at the end of 2019, that is in phase 2 of 3GPP effort. So, we have described the IMT 2020 requirements in all our previous descriptions using the M series of specifications of ITU. And now, 3GPP comes up with a set of specifications which meets these I, IMT 2020 requirements and as one will find generally it has been the case that these uh, technical solutions meet all the requirements and they will be branded as IMT 2020 and we have seen that IMT 2020 and 5G this terminology they are interchangeably usable. So, if we say which specifications would be meeting the uh, IMT 2020 or five gener fifth generation standard, we will obviously be going to the series of documents which are numbered in 3GPP from 38 series. Now, there could be other organizations than 3GPP who could also come up with uh, such technical specifications and again if they meet the requirement criteria of ITU, then they will again be branded as the fifth generation technology. Same thing happened in the case of 4G which was IMT advanced, we have discussed this in details earlier. So, 36 series of documents produced a set of technical specifications which, which met the 4G or IMT advanced set of requirements. Same sequence of events happens when it is IMT 2020 and here again the 38 series of documents would meet the particular requirements. So, when we look at the 38 series of documents, we are essentially talking about 5G from 3GPP perspective and we are talking about NR or the new radio from 3GPP perspective. So, if one has to go into the details of uh, these particular uh, technology specifications, uh, one would find 38.201 which is the NR, again we are seeing that the name appearing often. It talks about the physical layer, so we have to go to 38.201 document to get into the details as well as there are general descriptions. And 38.104 is the document which is also pertaining to NR that is the new radio and is the base station radio transmission and reception. Now, what you see is that there are two different set of documents which together describe the NR. There are many other documents also which are required in order to complete the description of, description of NR. Now, it is not possible to get into the details of all such documents in a course like this and our main aim is to look at the fundamental technologies, how things work and what are the details which make things run. Whereas, this particular documents 
provides exact or rather bit exact specifications. So, if one has to design or rather one has to develop a particular equipment which meets the ITU requirements or which is as per the 3GPP technology specifications, then one has to follow these along with the entire range of other documents which would describe the entire protocol structure. There is the technical report 912 which describes a new radio access technology. So, if you go to the website you will find a whole set of documents uh, which can be used and in order to understand one particular uh, methodology or the process which 3GPP would require you to follow, you have to go into the details of these documents. So, in this uh, particular course we will take a peek look into some of the documents as may be found relevant with respect to the new technologies. So, primarily we will be looking at uh, two 11 as well as 104 in order to establish the physical NR. So, what we find is that uh, the 201 document of 3GPP, it is a third generation partnership project, it, it contains the technical specification of radio access network, NR and the physical layer. Okay. And these are some of the abbreviations, um, I do not need to go through all the abbreviations, you can uh, easily understand them and go through them as per necessary. Uh, this user equipment is something which we will refer to, uh, cyclic prefix CP which we will refer to, DFT spread OFDM we have already discussed in the in the previous uh, lecture in the previous uh, topics and uh, physical downlink shared channel is the one which carries data, control channel is the one which carries control information relating to the data carrying in the downlink direction, this is the random access channel. Uh, P U S C H is the shared channel which carries data in the uplink direction and this contains control information for the data which is being transmitted in the uplink direction. Okay. So, the general description of uh, layer 1 uh, what we find is that the radio interface described in this specification, this is exactly taken from this particular document, okay, these few statements are taken just to show you that how these things are mentioned and what exactly is in the content. So, what we find is that 201 contains specification which covers the interface between the user equipment and the network. So, user equipment is the handheld device or the last unit of the entire thing that we are talking about. It, it uh, describes layer 1, layer 2 and layer 3 layer 1 is primarily the physical layer, layer 2 and layer 3 would, con con would conclude or would include the medium access control as you can see depicted by this picture and layer 3 would include the radio resource control. And between each layer there are service access points through which each layer gets access to the next layer. So, they communicate with the help of the service access points and the, the physical layer or the air interface is primarily described in layer 1. So, uh, in layer 1 what we find is that uh, the this is this is very very important statement and I have actually uh, made bold with the reason we take a note of it. The NR physical layer multiple access scheme. Okay. So, this is the primary thing when we talk about the air interface which is the multiple access team scheme or the radio access technology is based on OFDM with CP. So, this particular statement you will find exactly in the document and that is what is something which we have to carefully note that there has been fundamentally no change from what was there in the previous uh, description, but there are certain changes which are important and critical which we will take a look at. We also see another statement that discrete Fourier transform spreaded OFDM or DFT spread OFDM which we have described thoroughly in the previous lecture with CP that means with a cyclic prefix is also supported in the uplink direction. This we have also described, we have also given the reason uh, why it is uh, why it is so and uh, we have also described that under one specific case that if the size of DFT matches that of the uh, or the spreading in the DFT matches the size of IFFT that is used for the OFDM then you get a complete single carrier system with CP. So, in that case you get SC single carrier with CP and the receiver processing can be frequency domain equalization because you have a cyclic prefix. Okay. Both FDD and TDD are supported, so these are uh, some important facts which we should uh, keep in mind. Another important fact which is also uh, essential is that the layer 1 
is defined in a bandwidth agnostic way based on resource block right allowing the nr layer 1 nr is the new radio to adapt to various spectrum allocations a resource block spans 12 subcarriers so the entire definition is in terms of resource block resource block is a unit which is addressable which can be addressed by higher layers and every description is with respect to resource block so if you have a narrow band system the number of resource blocks would be less if you have a wide band system the number of resource block is large and in all cases what we find is that a resource block spans 12 subcarriers this description has also remained from the fourth generation to fifth generation and if you would uh, ask the question probably why one of the major reason is backward compatibility as well as forward compatibility now that would raise a question that would you do you think that this kind of a framework is going to remain when you go from 5g to 6g uh, we don't know the answer but some potential overlap has to remain and when we go from the 5G to 6G, uh, what I think is that there would not be as much similarity to the, to the 4G system as there will be similarity to the fifth generation system. So, uh, we, we there is no hope or neither there is any uh, speculation, but it all depends upon how the technology evolves from one stage to another. All right. So, now the modification that we see over here is the statement. Now, we are going by statement because uh, that is very vital with a given subcarrier spacing. Now, this is vital. This is the modification that is happening over the previous system. In the previous system, there was no such no such statement like with a particular subcarrier spacing, because the subcarrier spacing was fixed and it was described for all possible implementations which is constant and that was 15 kilohertz which we have seen in some of the specification charts that we have described earlier. Another important thing what we see over here which describes in our layer 1 that the radio frame has a duration of 10 millisecond okay, consists of 10 subframes with a subframe duration of 1 millisecond. Now, this subframe duration of 1 millisecond has also been carried over from the previous generation. However, the description of slot which is not given in this particular slide, we will see that has changed from the previous generation to the next generation. So, we see a modification within some existing structure. So, there is some kind of compatibility and some new things which have come in. A subframe is formed by one or multiple adjacent slots. So, here we have the description of slot each having 14 adjacent symbols. So, now again summarily we will of course, uh, see them in details what we find is that each slot having 14 symbols. So, a slot has 14 symbols and this has carried over from the earlier generation. Right? Although there is some modification in terms of the cyclic prefix and number of symbols on very specific cases in the previous generation system, but here the number of system number of symbols is fixed to 14, but the number of slots that fit into one subframe is different and that is dependent upon the subcarrier spacing. Uh, this is what uh, our aim is to understand and see how they fit in each other. Okay. So, this is uh, a list of some of the documents uh, which are necessary in order to completely understand the NR uh, physical layer. Uh, we will not go into details of everything, but my main intention uh, to provide you this list. So, that all those who are interested in the exact specification details can follow these different documents. Okay. So, the 38.202 which is one of the documents listed earlier. So, it provides the physical layer service provided by the physical layers and the scope is to describe the services provided by the physical layer and to specify services and functions, model of physical layer, parallel transmission of simultaneous physical layer and channels measurements provided by uh, physical layer. That means, there could be multiple layers of transmission and there could be a feedback provided from the user equipment to the base station and so on and so forth. So, all these things are described in 38.202. Sorry, what we find next is the 38.211, which will be our primary uh, description document, which we intend to describe over here. Uh, it provides definition of uplink downlink physical channels. So, these are the actual channels over which the signals are carried. 
the frame structure which we intend to discuss. We will talk about modulation at some point, the OFDM signal generation and all other procedures that are necessary which are part of signaling as, uh, as when the things go between the user equipment and the base station. So, we will see some part of the pre coding which is uh, due to MIMO and uh, there is also something called transform pre coding which is uh, nothing but again the DFT spread OFDM as well as there is also. So, when we talk about the layer mapping this primarily talks about the MIMO communications and the pre coding would talk about the pre coding weight matrices. Right. So, uh, we will see some of them although not everything that is present over there because our fundamental aim is to look at the way uh, the technology works and not into the way it is exactly implemented on a particular standard. Because there could be other um, standards and other applications where these technologies would work in a similar manner. Okay. Uh, 212 the next document it talks about channel coding. The moment you do channel coding there has to be a rate matching in order to fit into the frame structure and then transmode channel descriptions, control information and so on and so forth. Okay. This includes description about multiplexing as well. 213 this talks about the physical layer procedures for control and the scope is to establish the characteristic of physical layer procedures such as the synchronization, uplink power control, random access procedure uh, for reporting control information and so on and so forth. So, we will not go into this document, but uh, please find your time to get into details if you are really interested in the exact implementation. Uh, then there is uh, 214 which is uh, with respect to the part of data, see the previous one is with respect to procedures for control and see the physical layer control whereas the next one is with respect to data right and there also it is the power control and physical downlink shared channel related procedure so that is pdsch and that one is pdcch pucch so here it is pusch which we have described earlier okay and uh, 38.215 is related to the physical measurements and the scope is to establish the characteristic of the physical layer measurements and to specify control of UG and NG is the next generation radio access network measurements and capabilities for the new radio. So, when you go into these documents uh, you will find all such detailed description provided. Okay. We will uh, primarily talk about the 38.211 document, uh, we have carried over the same notation that is present in the document. So, that when you refer to it there is no uh, difference in uh, in the way we are describing them. So, K L P mu uh, these are some of the uh, parameters which are important because based on this everything will be defined. So, K indicates in our notation in our understanding a subcarrier index and L indicates the OFDM, OFDM symbol index. So, what you can see over here frequency domain index k and time domain index l for antenna port p. So, it is the p th antenna port through which signals are going out and subcarrier spacing configuration mu. So, we will see this in details in due time. Then we have a sub k l to the power p mu indicating the value of resource element k l for antenna port p and on all kinds of things. So, k L okay, is some index in frequency axis which is k. So, this is time axis, this is frequency axis, some index in time axis. So, this is the resource element for a particular antenna configuration. So, p is an antenna configuration. So, that means antenna port. So, if it is a particular layer, it would corresponding correspond to that particular antenna or maybe layer and uh, mu describes the, the physical size of this resource element. So, one has to understand that this is the smallest entity in the system. right? In other words when we will describe this is one sub carrier. So, we are drawing this part of the sink which is important for us. So, that is one sub carrier and it is one OFDM symbol. We are not concerned with the CP because CP is rejected. So, one sub carrier for one OFDM symbol forms the resource element. 
this is the fundamental entity okay and each of these are going to carry a complex symbol a k l p mu so k is corresponding to this k l is corresponding to this a is the variable which carries the value so in other words this is corresponding to ours x s of k that is the constellation point okay so this we are writing constellation point but if you are doing a dft spread oftm in that case this will be some complex value which is a combination of several com constellation points so which is some combination of constellation points so in in otherwise if you are not doing a dft spread you can uh, think of using an identity matrix in spread instead of the dft spreading matrix otherwise if you are doing a dft spread then you can have a dft spread so rather what we have is a combination of constellation points the combination will vary according to the uh, operation so if it is pure ofdm this will be a constellation point if it is dft spread uh, we take several such constellation points on different carriers and then we sum them up and that is this value so this has to be understood and connected to the notation that we have used before delta f sub carrier spacing we have also described this in all our descriptions so this is also an important parameter right and here we have some more descriptions about ts and tc which we will see later on so what is what is uh, critical here is what we see is mu is also described so we have been talking about mu so long so let us see what is mu what does mu mean so delta f is equal to 2 to the power of mu multiplied by 15 kilohertz right so that means mu can take different values in case of 4g mu was effectively zero in case of 5g and others mu can take values 0 1 2 3 4 right so what we see one of the major changes that have happened from 4g to 5g is that this delta f can take different values which had otherwise been remaining constant for the previous generation system so we uh, conclude uh, this lecture over here uh, where we have uh, summarized the or we have projected a background to the description of physical layer for 5G. Uh, we have discussed the technical uh, background earlier. Today we have talked about the documents which are relevant, the documents one which should read and also the parameters or the variables which are useful in describing the fifth generation frame or the particular physical layer which we are going to see in the next lecture. Thank you.